excited to uh, play Auburn, excited to get back home. You know, we'd been, even though we had a home game in there, we'd been uh, on the road three weeks in a row. Uh, excited to get back home uh, for homecoming and and play a really good Auburn team. And, you know, they start offensively with Bo and, and Tank, uh, two of the better uh, players at their position in the conference. And Bo sure makes a lot of things happen when it doesn't look like he has a possibility to. And, you know, D-Rob was over at Georgia, very fast wide receiver, had four of their five offensive linemen back. Uh, I really like their team, uh, their physical, really well coached. Coach Bobo does a great job over there. They're really physical. And defensively, they're, to me, they're back to where Auburn's been, uh, dominating on the D-line uh, with Hall and Fair and, and Harrison Wooden. I think those guys are really good players. Uh, you know, I don't know about Owen Papo, whether he's going to play or not, but he's certainly one of the better Mike backers, even though Chandler Wooten's come in and played really well. And then on the back end, Smoke Monday's an exceptional player. They're just a really good football team, and uh, we're excited to have a chance to get them in here and, and play. Uh, with that said, I, I uh, you know, we need our fans, and I think we're about 500 uh, tickets remaining for the game. Uh, if you look, and Trey, I, I had a quick glimpse of what you said, and it's 100% correct. You know, there's been two games that had specific, uh, in my opinion, uh, um, uh, with the game, I think the crowd mattered and helped the winning team. And I'm not saying either team would have not won without the crowd, but when we went to Georgia, it was 110 decibels over there. And it certainly affected the beginning of the game and throughout the game. And of course, when we played Texas here, our crowd was as good as any crowd that you could ever hope for. We need that crowd again. Uh, we need our students in here early, uh, raising heck early before the game. And, and uh, you know, I'm just telling you that the football team needs the fans and uh, we need them to come here and help us win on Saturday. That said, I'll answer any questions you have. Yeah, Coach, anything jump out from watching film specifically on defense that maybe you guys can identify that you can correct, get them playing like they were earlier in the year? Well, there will be some corrections and, and there'll be some changes and different things of that nature and what our schematics could be, uh, what, um, you know, who's playing. Um, uh, certainly, you know, uh, there was uh, really, there was a lot of problems um, that we have to get fixed. One of them was certainly tackling. Uh, we couldn't get corral on the ground and, and uh, our secondary support was poor. Um, and, you know, therefore that's why you saw a lot of big gap runs uh, go, go to the house. Uh, we, we could not uh, sustain, you know, we couldn't uh, get the edge. Um, we let the edge go a lot on defense and we busted uh, several coverages and, with a guy like Corral, he's going to, I mean, it's, it's, so it's seven on seven or routes on air to that point. Um, so there's a bunch of things that we have to uh, get fixed. Um, we're going to have full time practices. We're not cutting any time, even though we're in week seven, we just can't afford to, uh, we have to get better on both sides of the ball, but I, the glaring deal, obviously everybody knows was, defensive our defensive uh, side of the ball and and uh, those are three areas that we really really are going to have to concern ourselves with this week and along with what we're doing schematically and different things and moving people and things of that nature will there be anything with the way last year's game finished out will there be anything you'll use from that game as motivation for this one whether revenge factor or just showing them the video of how it ended or yeah i don't like know i you know i've gone back and forth on that you know what to do with that um this is a lot of sim similar players on our team a lot of guys have gone uh, i'm sure the same way with auburn as well um you know um uh, i think our deal would be more uh right now trey in my mind is winning winning home ball games, you know, we're off to a good start of, of uh, winning here this year. We're undefeated in our stadium and, and uh, it's been uh, several years since we've, we've been undefeated in Razorback stadium. And, and I think that 
that's something that means something. You know, just because it means something to me doesn't necessarily it means it resonates with the kids. And and I believe going, you know, headed one more game towards winning in our stadium and winning out in our stadium would be a big deal to our players. I think that might be a little bit more than the revenge factor because Auburn kids didn't really have anything to do with that. It was just a bad call. So big picture, you're one two point conversion away from being five and one, tied for the top of the West. Uh, what are your What are your thoughts on progress? Like where the program is halfway through this season, where where you thought it might be? You know, there's a lot of, of pressure um, that comes with success. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of pressure that comes with, you know, losing too. You know, I don't I don't really want to get used to that that part of the pressure, but. Um, there's a lot of pressure and once you start out like we did you know the fan base there everybody you know starts getting excited about you know you can go beat the Green Bay Packers you know and and uh, so with that uh, becomes a lot of responsibility um, I would much rather have it that way you know uh, uh, being four and two uh, I think is certainly not where we want to be but um, we can't sit here and go, well, that's that's been a terrible season to this point. Uh, certainly wish we would have been able to convert the two-point play or stop them or, you know, make a field goal or, you know, not get a turnover, whatever it may be, um, and be five and one. But I'm proud of our kids, the way they play. Uh, we have to – I'm proud of our coaching staff. We just – we have to get better. I have to do a better job, and and uh, once I do that, it'll trickle down. And and uh, but I'm proud of where we're setting at this point. And I'd I'd probably be lying to you if I told you anything else. Uh, I haven't seen the replay yet, but there was a couple of balls that may could have been picked off. I think late in the first uh, half, of early in the second half. Just those are the kind of things that could turn a game. You know? Well, you're absolutely it? right. We dropped one, and then they the next play they kick a 50 yard field goal. You know, and and uh, or something like we, we dropped one and then shortly they they end up converting to three points so uh, you know we practice that every day the bottom line we didn't try to high point the ball on any of them you know and um, you know on catch the one he you know he's got a broken hand you know so got a cast on there it's a little hard for him he probably would have made that I believe he would have if you know he would have had been able to you know not have a cast on but um you know those things happen Warren Thompson had himself a pretty interesting day uh, on Saturday I wonder what you've made of his growth and just how he's complimented trailing ever since well I think he's getting better all the time you know he still has to continue to uh, be a better blocker he has to continue to learn the offense but uh you know I think if you look at the portal I think we've had five guys come from the portal and and uh, I believe four of them were starting and Trent's been beat up. Gordon's been hurt, uh, but he would be playing a lot of ball for us now if he wasn't. But, um, you know, he's coach has done a good job with him and he's caught some really good big balls here in the last three or four games at least. And uh, and he's long, rangy and fast and. And he doesn't say a whole lot, you know. He doesn't t doesn't speak much, but doesn't talk a whole lot. But he he uh, he's turned out to be a really good compliment. Uh, they're going to have to watch him as well instead of, you know, just one or two of the other guys. After working so much on a four man front in the spring and early, do you, you still feel you got the depth to play that if you need to. I think we do. You know, I, you know that's some things obviously, coach and I have talked about and and. Uh, um, yeah, we certainly do. I mean, if you're sitting there uh, rotating, which we are right now, eight guys on, on the D line, sometimes nine, uh, that, you know, four times two is eight. You certainly could do it. And, and uh, I'm not going to sit here and say what we're going to do or what we're not going to do. But to answer your question, you said we have enough D linemen, we feel like uh, that we could rotate in the four man line. Also, does is, is Nick's present similar kind of dual th uh, dual threat problems that Corral did, or are they different different styles? I think he's incredible, Bo. I mean, he he uh, extends plays as good as anybody in the country. I mean, you can't get him on the ground, and uh, you know we're gonna have to work a ton of scramble drill. 
um, because uh, he he extends plays and uh, certainly he's fast. Uh, I just really like him and and uh, think he's a, a big time competitor. But yeah, I mean those are things we're real concerned about him running the football as well. Hey Sam, how familiar are you with, with Brian Harson? He was a little bit of an out of the box SEC hire and that he didn't have SEC experience, but he's got two former head coaches as coordinators. You know, Bobo was an interim. Um, what do you know about Brian Harson, and maybe how does Auburn look different under him in, in the past? I think, I mean, he, he obviously went in with Derek and and with Mike, and I mean, he he hired some really good coaches around him uh, that knew the SEC. You know, I don't know the man uh, well at all. Uh, I've heard a lot of positive things about him and his program and what he's done. I know his record as a head coach is incredible, really good record. And, and uh, you know, Auburn wouldn't have hired him if he wasn't an exceptional coach. But I don't – I know the guys on his – you know, Will Friend, I know guys on his staff a little bit better than I know him. Yeah, and having two court – I mean, obviously you got Barry here, so you kind of know what that's about. But – how big do you think it is he's got Mason and Bowman? I think for him, it's the same thing that with that happened with me. I mean, he's been – he certainly was a head coach and a great one before, you know, Auburn hired him, which I wasn't. But um, uh, I think just, uh, you know, you sit there and could you imagine sitting in their staff room and you've got two guys that's been in this league as, you know, or not – Bobo wasn't in this league, but he was a head coach and he was in the league forever, you know, at Georgia. And, and uh, so I think that would really be beneficial to him. And and I think he'd go a long way in recruiting as well. So how does Auburn want to run the ball? How do, how do they move it? Are, are they have any similar schemes? Yeah, well, work? I think they're a big inside zone team. I mean, uh, they want to – and really they're, they're, they're hitting it straight downhill, you know. A lot of cutback on that inside zone, and basically they're letting, uh, you know, Bigsby and and um, and Hunter and and Shivers, they're they're letting them get their shoulders square and hit it. You know, they're hard to stop for less than four or five yards when they get to that point. They they have a very variation. You know, they run a little truck play where it's down down kick out, little toss. Uh, they do a lot of zone read. Uh, with Nick, uh, let him let him be a runner as well. They have a lot of fly, little inside fly sweeps. Um, uh, not a huge uh, get the ball outside team unless they're doing it with somebody other than the backs. You know, um, a lot of nakeds off of off of their zone scheme. Um, so. Um, it looked to me a little bit very similarity to what we were doing maybe at Georgia when I was there uh, um, those four years. I know Coach Bobo came, you know, him and Kirby are really good friends, and he and he came to practices and things of that nature. What a really great man he is. He's a great guy. Uh, but uh, some of those things. Third down package looks pretty similar to what we were doing uh, at Georgia. You know, a lot of quick tosses outside, you know, uh, trying to get the end to bite and just outrun him for the first down, some things of that nature. You mentioned uh, Catalan's hands. Is he going to be in a cast all year? And then also, uh, Gordon, do you expect him to get back and help you all this year? Uh, yeah, and I'm not for sure. Let's go with Gordon first. I think Gordon, I, I feel like he, there's, I'm hoping that there's a possibility he can get back this week. You know, he was better last week. Uh, we didn't travel him because, you know, we don't travel guys that we don't think have an opportunity to play. Um, and then uh, on Cat, uh, I think there will always be some type of protection there uh, throughout this this year with his hand. Dalton Wagner, uh, I guess he traveled but didn't play. Do you have a status update on him? Well, Dalton's got a finger. and. Uh, um, the bottom line is, is that uh, it went out on him uh, and they couldn't get it back in place. Uh, he had surgery on that finger this morning. And so, uh, you know, his status is not going to be available for a while. 
as far as last week, because you, when you let it be known about Crawford and, and um, St. John, just how you feel that, that Wimmer and Latham kind of responded to the challenge last week? I thought they played well. You know, I think a lot of times you, you get, you think you're going to lose your job. You, you go back to play and how you earn that job. And uh, I think they did. I thought they had a, a good game. I was really proud of Ty Clary. You know, out at tackle, uh, he played the entire game out there at right tackle. Uh, I th I still think that I tell you what we found out a little bit uh, last week was about Jones. You know, I think Jones can be our another tackle for us. You know, we moved him out to left tackle. I believe we're going to look at him a little bit as a swing guy. Um, he's very athletic and and long enough. Um, and I want to leave those two big kids inside. I, I just didn't think they were quite ready uh, for game action last week. And, you know, we were moving the ball pretty well, and it's not really time, you know, to change that around. If, if, if going into the game you're not – you hadn't seen enough where they can, you know, consistently help you move the football. But I think that's what we're going to do is keep them inside. And, and uh, part of that's because I think – you know, we need big presence in there. And the other thing is, I think Luke Jones, I thought he looked really good last week at tackle. You recall the instance where Catalan broke his hand? I don't. Uh, it was in, I don't, I don't, I don't remember the exact play, but um, it was uh, AM, I believe. Yeah. Um, this has been an interesting stretch. You've got, not get you looking ahead or anything, but next week is an 11 o'clock. That's like four, is that four straight 11 o'clock game? Is that right? And then mm -hmm. only one game in your on campus stadium over four games. Is, have you ever been a part of a stretch like that before? No. Uh, you know, I, I don't think I've ever been a part of a, as many 11 a.m. games in a row, you know, at all, and let alone, uh, you know, on the road. Uh, that many times, you know, but um, I'm, I'm grateful for 11 a game games. They're a lot better, you know, when you win because, uh, you know, you can go home and look at everybody else and say, man, that guy, why do you make that call? Why do you do that? You know, and have a good time. But when you lose, you just not even fun. You know, you go home and you think over and over and over about how you can, you know, a man who corrects himself looks at himself, you know, not, I, you know, I, I know we didn't play well defensively and I get all that. I got to look at me first. What am I doing to help them? What am I, am I giving an input? Am I, you know, am I looking at enough film to find a flaw over here, flaw, things that can help you know, because of my offensive background, looking uh, at their offense to help our defense. But uh, I'm going to do better. Uh, I, I can help, and, and I need to. Coach, Dominic Johnson's physicality kind of popped out several times. At Who? Dominic Johnson, yeah. his physicality on, on Saturday. I'm curious, has he been like that since he got here, or is that maybe – it's kind of the edge that's carried over since he got back to your backfield. No, I think he's been that, you know, near leg, near shoulder guy, like he did, you know, on the, on the sweet play the other day. Uh, he is our best pass protector, you know, he likes it, you know, a guy that, you know, it's like, you know, I had three sisters and they were playing six on six basketball and they were guards and they never got to shoot, you know, I guess they just like to guard, you know, it's kind of like a running back. You know, I don't think you're really a good blocking running back unless you just really want to do it. You know, I mean, everybody wants to carry it, you know, so he really likes to block and I don't know. I know he likes to run the ball, man. He, that first run he made the other day was really an exceptional physical eight yard run, you know, but, he really enjoys the physicality of the game. And uh, I've just been really happy with him again. I think we've got to continue to get him uh, more carries. I think, he'll, I think he'll help us that way. But we've got so many guys that, you know, it's hard to pick and choose. You know, Rocket certainly played, played well, you know, besides the one turnover. But uh, they're all becoming a little bit better players, I think. What was y'all's evaluation of 
KJ. I mean, was that one of the better quarterback performances? It wasn't bad, was it? Um, I, you know, I taught him. I didn't think he'd ever use it, but I taught him that where he where he launched from the five and scored. I just I didn't think he'd ever use it, but I was proud to, you know, he came over and thanked me for teaching him that. Um, I don't know. It wasn't any competitive, and um, you know, made some really nice throws. The one they threw at the end of the game, I thought it was an overthrow, you know, and then we just went up and got it, you know. But um, he's tough. I mean, he took some hits, you know, and uh, he's just coming into a well-rounded guy, and you know, you have him two and a half more years, you know, and. I think that really bodes well for the University of Arkansas, but uh, he's, I know one thing, I know the fans believe in him and I do, but our team really believes in the guy. And he doesn't say a whole lot, you know, but uh, he's one of the most popular guys in there because of how he handles his business and, and what he'll do on the football field. I just, I mean, can you imagine where he started this year and then where he's at right now? It's. It's really incredible, and he'll get better too because he's a hard worker. Saturday night, you said that you thought the pitch to Dominic might have been there. KJ thought it was muddy. What's what's the breakdown of the two points? Well, the end the end came inside, and so KJ thought that he could get outside on it, and then the secondary secondary contain came up on him. We didn't have the little dart in the flat, and you know, in all honesty, I don't know. Uh, he came off of that pretty fast. I don't know if he saw – because Myron had lost his seal hinge on the backside. So that guy's coming underneath too. I don't know if what all he saw that fast. Um, but I think then at one point he decided, I, you know, I'm going to run it. And then here comes secondary contain. And then I think, to be honest with you, I think he looked for trailer and figured trailer might can go get it and – you know, it just was a little hot, you know, and it would, I mean, there was a lot of, everybody was covered, you know, and, uh, you know, the play had, uh, in practice, we had, the shovel was there. Um, and then we, we came around, the dart was there, the little flat was there. Uh, those two different times that we ran it at practice, um, well, it just wasn't there that day. Sam, you know, Ty started 30 plus games on the line, but I think that was his first start ever at Tagle. I know he played some there earlier, but how'd you think he played and how good do you feel about him? I guess being the guy for a while, if Dalton's going to be up. Yeah, I thought they all played pretty good. You know, I think uh, Cody's biggest challenge this week is trying to find out what he's going to do with his personnel, you know, whether, you know, Brady moves out there some as well. I mean, you have to have a back out. Is Tykees the guy? I really don't want Tykees to be back out there because I'm trying to develop those two big guards inside. So, but I thought Ty did a really good job um, the entire day. Did a nice job in pass protection. I think Bo came over and helped him quite a little bit too. You know, they were three man rush. So you basically with Ricky, the way Ricky was playing, you basically could could double team both both edges, you know, and that's what we elected to do is once we secure Ricky was secure in there. Um, but I think, you know, for the first game and and uh I mean Ty's a veteran, like you said, he started a lot of games and Going into the game, I wasn't one bit concerned about. I wasn't uh, about right tackle because Clary, had, you know, he's obviously been practicing it during the week because for several weeks because of of uh, uh, Wag's hand, and uh, we were taking Wagner out of out of any good on good. So the good on good reps, Ty was getting. You guys are slight favorite in this game. I think it's the first time since you got <laughs> here. You've been an SEC favorite, you know. No, I know it is. Of course, of course Texas is kind of a quasi SEC team, Power Five. So it's first. Time we weren't favored there either, Bob. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, the first time you've been favored against a Power Five team. Just how does that feel? What, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, I, was, I don't know. I don't know if it has any outcome on the game or not. But I'd rather be favored than twenty-two point underdogs. I mean, uh, I don't know what it means to be honest with you, but. You know, we are favored against Auburn, so we've come a little little ways, you know, so we'll find out. I mean, that that obviously if that was the case, we'd be uh, going in this game, we'd be two and fourteen, you know. But still gotta play the game, but so I don't really know how to answer the question.
you talked about the physicality of the running backs. What are they doing outside of practice from a strength and conditioning perspective to get better? And the second part of that, how has Rocket progressed through this season, especially for being so young? I think, well, we, we still lift t- twice, two times a week with for strength. It's not just to maintain for strength. If you're not a traveler, you, you're going to lift three times a week. But, but um, um, I think Rocket, really, to be honest with you, I think he really can – he got some confidence in scrimmage – in the first two scrimmages, I think. And you see him – I feel like he's just getting better, you know, each game. And, and what he's doing – Jimmy's done a really good job in individual with – next hole, next hole, next hole, because zone's about where's my read? Is it there? Yes, hit it. Is it not? Hit the next one back, not there. Hit the next one back, wherever it may be. It's just, it's really simple, but it's hard to get in a young running back unless you rep it all the time, and it'll just be next hole, next hole. You guys have seen that drill out there with Jim. And now in the SEC, the hole's open, and then it – Boom, it closes in a hurry. And I just keep talking to those young guys about, hey, man, if it's there, hit it. And that's what he's doing now. There's not a hesitation. And if he misses one, we don't go, well, you should have done this, 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 this. You know, we say, okay, was that the next opening? No. Okay, well, just be patient and hit the next one. And uh, there's a lot of difference between him and AJ, but AJ – I still think he's behind Rocket because of the scrimmages. You know, he just never got that. His first experience came in a game, you know, and Rocket had those scrimmages to help him. And A.J. also lost about 10 to 12 days there with the, with his concussion. So I'm really proud of Rocket. and He's he going to be a really good player. He's, he's a good player now. He's going to be a really good player for us. Coach, it seemed like Ole Miss's uh, defensive line had quite a few injuries during the game mm. that kind of slowed things down. I think they came what, back though. Yeah, uh, healthy enough to get I, back in there. I think based on what I was reading, you could maybe submit some of those to the NCAA. I wonder if you've done that or no, do you have any ideas. No, you can't. On... No, the rule the rule has to change. I mean, right now it's a there's no penalty, and I'm not saying the guys weren't hurt I mean they may have been hurt I'm I'm not a medical doctor you know so but a lot of them you know cramped up or whatever happened to them and no that I think the the rules committee's got to look at that you know they wait every two years to do it and I think we I'm on the board of trustees too I think I think really have to look at that you know Uh, that's the first time that many injuries had happened in a game this year and uh uh, last year it happened to us a few times, but um, we've got to, you know, we'll address that. And I'm, again, I'm not saying they were hurt or weren't hurt or whatever. It just there are a whole bunch of them.